to ask, uh, because of the, the number of franchises that you've been a part of, that Platinum Dudes has been a part of, where is the line, I guess, sort of drawn between being slavish to source material and sort of carrying uh, forward what has been previously established and trying to do something new and fresh and different while maintaining, I guess, uh, the, the attributes that people are most familiar with? That is a great question. Thank you. Because we, uh, th I, I guess, if as a company, if there's something we've struggled with, it's that very thing, which is, uh, you know, how much do you integrate with the fans know with a new story, and 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 in doing so, how do you satisfy the old viewers and and hopefully what you're getting in the new viewers? And I think where we've come out to on this, if you, we're talking about in turtles, because there mm -hmm. are three different source materials for, for turtles is I think what we try and do is we try and recognize all the source material that has come before us um, and not be slavish to it, to, to use your word, and, and tell the best story we can, but still integrate things that fans will recognize from that. So, for example, in this movie, there's Purple Ooze. So there has been Purple Ooze before in the Turtles lore, and, and the characters, Krang, and is, you know, the big character in the cartoon, I mean, he's been elsewhere, mm -hmm. but, but Krang in the cartoon is what most people think of Krang from, and so that's there, and so, you know, it's a balance that, unfortunately, you don't know if you got it right until it's too late. Well, let me ask you then about sort of the change aspect, because a uh, number of things, Turtles included, between Turtles, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, um, Jason, to, to, a, for, uh, to a point. There's been change along the way, or there was appearance, some alterations to uh, origin stories. Um, does that open up for criticism before you even get started, though? Listen, it, <laughs> especially with horror movies. I find it more with horror movies. I get more emails to this day about Friday the 13th than anything else. Nothing else even comes close. And... Um, it's always, this is the job that we chose to have, you know, we, we chose to remake movies. And uh, the fan base um, can be painful, but there's so much knowledge to be gleaned from what they have to say. And I think that we've gotten better at paying attention and we've changed things in post because of emails or a prevailing view that seemed to be gaining a lot of support. We, we've certainly listen to that, but it's impossible to get it right all the time because there's always going to be someone that tells me that I ruined their childhood. <laughs> With Turtles, the first film had uh, a bit of a rough start, had yes. some reshoots, the appearance with the toys got leaked early. Yes. Um, do you get the sense that people have moved beyond that with the second movie? Almost that, okay, the first one's out of the way, they establish what they want to do, now let's just accept this world and see where they go with it. I can just tell you it feels that that's the case right now. Um, I don't feel the same resistance that we had when the first movie was coming out. It feels like the people who love the movie are eager to see it. And um, I feel, I, I also, it feels like families are very open to this being their franchise, their action franchise. And so what I love is that yeah, my kids who are teenagers, well, they're older now, but they were teenagers, you know, they'll, they'll see it. But then the young kids, like five, six, seven-year-olds, there's a whole new generation of Turtle fans. And, um, you know, and I'm, I'm excited about them, them seeing it also. One of the other things uh, concerning, I guess, the sequel is you're looking at an expansion of the universe from where you were, you were just sort of establishing everything in the first film. Here in the second film, now you can sort of grow it as the franchise continues. With characters like Rocksteady and Bebop and Krang now being introduced, um, where do you strike the balance between growing the sandbox to be able to play with uh, as the franchise expands and concerns of overstuffing the movie? Unfortunately, you don't know the answer until the movie's done and the movie got finished today. So, <laughs> I, you know, I mean, it feels to me like if you're going to have a second turtle movie, you got to have those characters in it. You can't put that off. You can't hide Krang till the. Who knows if there's ever going to be another one? So, as fans of the movie, we want to make a, the movie that has Krang in it. There really hasn't been, you know, a CG real Krang in a movie before. So that's exciting to us. The same thing, Bebop and Rocksteady. You know, we have, you know, we designed those characters in movie one. We couldn't fit that into the movie then. 
Um, it's incumbent, the challenge is the writer's challenge. It's their challenge to figure out how do you divide up all this real estate between all of those characters and, and what's the right balance. And uh, that's something, that's probably the reason the movie took so long for us to actually finish. It's not, the movie was n never, as you said, the first movie was a challenge and, and we had a lot of things that we had to do in post to get there. This movie is different. This movie came in really well and the tone of the movie was right from the get-go and we didn't have to wrestle with what do the turtles look like or how do they act what we had to wrestle with is we have all these characters how can we make sure the story is working for all of those characters and so um, I guess it's a very long-winded way to say you don't know the answer and if you've done it right until the audience tells you well then are there plans to further expand because obviously there are certain things in this film that are even sort of laying the groundwork. You have a little bit more um, exposure to Baxter Zachman. Mm -hmm. um, the Turtles have a wealth of characters to sort of dip into along the way, both allies and foes. It's one film at a time. We can't, we can't afford the luxury of thinking that there's going to be 12 of these. You know, we put, we leave nothing on the field, honestly. My partners and I have given everything we have to this film, to the detriment of other projects at our company because we're fully immersed here. And if we start thinking about what we're saving for movie six or seven, or if we're trying to think about where that storyline's going to go, I believe that the current movie that we're working on will suffer. So all we really, honestly, there is no talk of anything but this movie. And until the movie comes out and we see how it's received, that's the time to start having those conversations. There are lots of parties to sort of satisfy with a film like this, because you have Platinum Dunes, you have Paramount, you have Nickelodeon, you have the fans. Um, how do you put that stew together? Okay, so uh, let me take it one by one. Sure. Our partner in the movie is Paramount and Nickelodeon. I mean, we made the movie with them. There was not a decision that, there, that they weren't either on set or that we didn't discuss with them. So they're our partner. And whatever we did was in concert with them. Um, in terms of the fans, you know, that's always, always a really challenging thing to, to deal with because um, inevitably, there are those fans that will just say, I'm not going to see that movie because those aren't the Jim Henson characters running around in suits, and I refuse to go to CG Turtles, see CG Turtles. You know, I wish there were something I could say or do to turn them around, but, the, but that, those fans, I don't know that there is anything that can convince them. I mean, probably not. So <laughs> that's, a, but that's a shame for me, you know, because I'd like to, con I'd like them to give us the opportunity to come and see what this movie is and, and see what turtles look like swimming or see what Krang looks like in, th in 3D and, and how amazing that is. Um, but there is a segment that we just will never be able to convert mm -hmm. and we just make peace with that. Well, let me ask you one quick question about Friday the 13th, because sure. you brought it up as it being one of the things you're yeah. asked about the most. There's been a lot of discussion about what is going to happen with this. There was talks of about going to the 80s, about doing found footage. Yes. All uh, directors have been shuffled in and out. Uh, what is the yes. current status of where Friday the 13th is right now? Okay, today, today, uh, we have a great writer. Aaron Guzikowski is writing the script. Aaron wrote Prisoners. And he's, a, he's a fantastic, he's, he's a better writer than we deserve for this franchise. He's fantastic. <laughs> and the script that he has come up with is really great. And we got it a couple weeks ago. We gave our notes to this, the, the, we gave our notes to Aaron, the studio gave the notes to Aaron, and we're waiting for the script to come back. I mean, yes, there have been false starts. Um, some of them self-created. I was not excited, and I, I've said it, I didn't want to do a found footage version of that movie, and there was, there were some people who wanted that to happen, and as long as that was the case, I was dragging my feet because I thought we'd get killed, and it just didn't feel, <laughs> literally, it didn't feel like the right way to make the movie. We are on the right track now to make the movie the right way, I think. Are the old horror icons still relevant? The Leatherfaces, the Freddy Kruegers, the Jason Voorhees, are they still, is there still something about them that reaches out to new generations that um, that is still untapped yet, or is it sort of a time to try and create new icons for those generations and sort of let them rest with the fans of, of my day and, and the day before that grew up with them, that are familiar with them, and now you have younger fans who don't necessarily have that connection with them anymore. It's very hard because um, 
we've made original characters and we've tried to do that and that has never fared as well. I mean, at the end of the day, we're creative people in a business and the business is getting the studios their money back. That's why I'm able to sit here and talk to you today, obviously. So um, when we have gone for original characters, it usually has not done as well as when we go back and revisit our friends of our youth, right? It just usually isn't so. As a business person, you have to look at your time and the resources that you're giving, given and decide what's the best use of this money and this time is, you know, we've, so we try and balance it. The Purge was a new idea that, that hadn't been there. It wasn't necessarily a character, but it was a new notion, mm -hmm. which was very well received. Um, but I would be delighted if my next year was a Purge movie and Friday the 13th. There's, one is not better or worse. It's just um, what the fans are eager to see. And it doesn't feel like we're creating horror icons that, uh, that they're as excited to see. They, they like notions, like paranormal activity, they like that notion, or Inception, they like that notion. But the icons that you're talking about, I don't feel like, I guess the guy in Saw, I guess that's, is that, I mean, who am Maybe. I forgetting? Maybe, but is there any? There, no, there, it feels like there's been sort of a, a gap. A void, a void, a void of icons. There. And um, I mean, there have been, Candyman was sort of a, a shot, of even the Final Destination. There have been right. franchises that have come along along the way, right. but nothing where it was all centered around this character that people were right. going out and, and paying their money to see. So, but I think that that's not because we we as producers in the business are we're tr we're trying. The audience is not accepting it, so then that doesn't leave you the option of coming up with a new guy. It gives you the if you're lucky enough to be able to remake someone, that seems to be working. So, so you is go, that I mean, is that the catch twenty two though that fans call out to want? Do fresh original content, and then, and then they don't given, support it. Then they don't support it. Yes. So how, it, as on your end, how do you then go in and say, "Look, we're trying, we're trying to give you what you want, but you got to meet us halfway." Well, there is an element to this where the fans are usually uneasy or unhappy with us <laughs> from the get go. <laughs> so that's part of it. You know, we're if if I read a script today with a character that was amazing, I would make that movie. It wouldn't matter to me if I were making it Friday the 13th or whatever it is. It's just, what's the best story to tell um, that hopefully gets people to leave their houses and go see a movie in a theater? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, great questions. Thank you. Well thought out.